Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Good day, everybody, and welcome to another incredible episode of the Real Film Nerds Podcast. My name is Matt. I'm a podcaster. With me, as always, my good buddy, who's also a podcaster and a drinker and a partier and a troublemaker. Uh, I wouldn't say the troublemaker, but uh, I'll take the other things. Uh, uh, I'm uh, Mysterious Mike Talent. Woo! The true talent of the pod. Yes. Uh, how's uh, everybody doing today? Hopefully it's it's great. Hopefully it's not snowing. Yeah. Is it snowing there? Dude, it feels like it. It really feels like it. And, you know, they're doing the courthouse lighting and the parade and all the prescotty things today. So in the spirit of all things that are Prescott, including this podcast, which is based in Prescott, there was something pretty sweet that dropped this week on Netflix. We have talked about it on the podcast before. I restrained from going and seeing this in the theaters. I restrained from going and seeing the premiere that was here. They called it the Arizona premiere. It is now out on Netflix. Mr. Mysterious Mike Talent was able to see it. It is a Prescott-based film, almost 100% filmed here in Prescott, and that is the true story called Wishman. Mike, you want to give us the rundown? Yes. Uh, so before I get to the rundown real quick, I'm just going to say this is episode number 149. And um... Oh, good call, man. Sorry, I forgot. I'm a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yeah, make that your job, too, because you take notes now. See, I don't take notes. Oh, yeah. Okay. So uh, the rundown for this movie is a uh, movie is about a police officer who struggles with his past while trying to be a good person. As fate would have it, this is an origin story about a nonprofit organization. Uh, this is directed and written by Theo Davies, starring cast Andrew Steele, Kirby Bliss Blayton, Blanton, Blanton, sorry, Matt, like Matt was thinking that it was like uh, the whiskey Blanton's. Delicious, delicious whiskey. I need to find that. I, I They have it like down in Phoenix at that, um, what's that really expensive uh, liquor store beer thing that's like nationwide? BevMo? BevMo. Yeah, yeah. I think BevMo is one of them. There's like four of them down in Phoenix and it's at the one that's like the farthest freaking away and it's still like $70 a bottle. I'm like, I don't know. Might have to wait even though that whiskey was delicious. Yes, yes. Um, also starring in this movie is Robert Pine. That's all I have for the, the rundown on this one. No Tom Sizemore? <laughs> no, I mean, Tom Sizemore is in it, but it's not for very long, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't include him in the stars. Yeah, he, he's in there, but he's, not, he's just a big-named actor. Yeah. I, seriously, his first scene, I didn't even recognize him as Tom. It was later, later on when they were in the uh, um, uh, police station that I was like, oh, my God, that's Tom Sizemore. That's true. That's true. Well, Matt, um, I guess with this movie, um, the filming location, like, do you recognize all these places? Like, is this just like, was it just weird watching it? You're like, man, I know where all this stuff's at. Oh, yeah. It's wild. It was really, really wild because I could nail down every single shot. There's a couple where I'm like, that looks like here, but I'm not 100%. But I'm like, yeah, that that's probably either Chino Valley or Paulden or Williamson Valley on a couple of those, like the outdoor ones. But some of them, I just, I'd say 90% of it, I could tell you exactly where they filmed it. Man, that, that's really cool. Uh, I have been to Prescott quite a few times to visit Matt, but I am not an expert like he is. So I was like, you know, that looks like Arizona. So that was cool. But... I couldn't tell you where everything was. Well, and you were here just recently, but you didn't do the tour of Prescott like you've done in the past. Yeah, no, I didn't have a lot of time. We had things to do, but it, it was a lot of fun. So, but, okay, so one of the most prominent ones, and it's one of the only issues I have with this film. It's towards the Whoa. beginning. I'm not going to, it's okay. not a spoiler, but all it's right, towards right. the beginning. There's a certain stretch of road where our good buddy officer Frank Shankwitz is pulling people over. That is Glassford Hill in the background, and that little two lane highway is right off of our 
interstate, well, not interstate, our highway 89A that goes around town and then goes up and over and into Drome and into Cottonwood, into Sedona, and then into Flagstaff. But that little two lane highway is right off that offshoot because they could shoot, shut it down and nobody get hurt and all that stuff and they could control the thing. But it was kind of odd to see them like drive past Glassford Hill and then drive past it again when they pulled them over and then drive past it again. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, okay. I, I didn't catch that, obviously, but uh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't a real long stretch of road or it isn't because it's still there, but I, I caught it multiple times but again you know glassford hill is like my backyard practically because i live on the other side of glassford hill <laughs> oh all right all right i mean yeah uh, that, i don't live anywhere near that anybody that's trying to stalk me oh okay all right and then uh matt what, what did you think of the acting in this movie i personally really liked all the acting there's a few characters that are really i like quite a bit uh the main character frank Shankowitz, uh was really good, and uh, Kitty. I, I really like both those performances. Um, what did you think? I thought the acting overall overall was great. There are some missteps here and there, but it is mostly in the child actors. But you can't hold it against them because they are children, so you can't really do that. I mean, they did a great job, but not at the level of, say, like Andrew Steele did, who played Mr. Frank Shankowitz. Or Kirby Bliss, uh, Blanton, who did play Kitty, or even Tom Sizemore, or even Danny Trejo, who was in it for five seconds. You can't hold it like against them. You know what I mean? Because they're kids. Right, right. That's about the only misstep I saw. I thought the adult cast did wonderful. Again, the kids didn't do bad. I just think that it could have been better. I don't think I noticed this till about the middle of the movie uh, but it's representing a certain time period and i actually thought it did a pretty good job of keeping the cars and the different things pretty consistent with the time period that it was supposed to be representing yeah it is well i'm not 100 percent sure on the flashbacks and that's another one that kind of bothered me was the flashbacks and how they did some of the flashbacks and i know you have issues with that especially in our last pod with uh the irishman yeah i was gonna save that for the story but i i, yeah, I definitely I'm, kind I'm of not thought it was a little far, but yeah odd. yeah they're they're not they're there's some that i'm like uh okay now when are we you know what i mean so i had some issues with some of that stuff overall for the most part it was great yeah, yeah, th this this was a this was a pretty good movie to watch and I really hadn't heard anything besides it from you and so I'm hoping that all of our listeners can help spread the word on this movie cuz this is really great. So uh it's on Netflix so pretty much everyone can watch it, I guess. I feel like most of America has Netflix now. Yeah, it just came out on Tuesday, December 3rd on Netflix if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And that's a big deal. It's a real big deal that it got picked up by Netflix. Yeah, no, that is a real big deal. And um, I, uh, Matt, uh, I, I just, I think it's time to move on to uh, let me know what you're drinking. What are you drinking, Matt? <sighs> well, Mike, I'm drinking a classic, delightful, delightful Mexican beer, Dos Equis Amber. Ooh. Dos Equis Amber. I really like Dos Equis Amber. That's a good one. I, I'm, I'm just more of a fan of the Amber than the uh, than the Lager. I mean, you know, if there's a choice, I pick the Amber, but I don't have a problem with the Lagers. So, all right, Mike, go ahead. Show me what IPA you are drinking today. All right. Well, uh, this one goes out to Mr. Steve Stockmeyer, and this is another IPA because I know you hate that I talk about IPAs all the time, but this is the Atomizer ultrasonic infused it's a from full sail brewing company which is uh outside of oregon somewhere i think uh, let me see what it says hood river oregon is where this is from oh yeah i know full sail i've had a few of their other beers but it's steve stockmar if you call him stockmar he might get angry you know all right you know how angry all right. those hippies can be i do know how angry those hippies can be but he does he does love his ipas it's like his favorite thing on the planet much like you why is it that you hippie and hipsters and beer snobs and all that crap all are ipa ipa no stouts ambers lagers scottish style ales that's where it's at i've got some 
I got a really good uh, six pack of stout. Uh, it's called Narwhal. Uh, Sierra Nevada makes it. Uh, oh, yeah. Only That's every other two years. Um, but I'm saving that for um, the uh, sports ball for tomorrow. The sports ball? Yeah. All right, Mike. So what's the next thing in your structure of your list that you're looking at since we're still quote unquote structured? <laughs> All right, Matt. So I wanted to talk about the story a little bit. Now, is this uh, it, spoiler story or is this just story overall in impressions? No, this is this is just the story overall impressions. Um, okay, you're gonna have to start doing the intro since you're running the show now. I'm out. <laughs> All right, uh, <laughs> I'm just so it's, it, like it. It, uh, it started out a little bit slow uh, for me, and was not sure why all the flashbacks, but uh, it really came together in the third act. So I, I think they corrected all the things that there was. There's one flashback in particular where there's no spoilers. Di- no, no spoilers. Where I I wasn't sure what time we were in because it kind of jumped and it was like uh, a phone call kind of thing. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I'm not spoiling, but there, there's a phone call placed from a place and I wasn't sure if it was the future or if it was the past. It was a little bit too, I don't know. I, I, I felt like the editing was too quick. Yeah. There's a couple of those that really kind of failed in my opinion as well. I believe I know the one you're talking about, and that's one of the ones that failed for me. And there was another one. I don't remember if it was before or after that one that failed pretty hard for me where I was like, hold on, wait a minute. So are we in the past of the film or are we in the current day of the film? And it kind of tripped me up. But then again, there was one scene where they go travel to the past, which did work really well, where Frank is sleeping and it transitions into the past and a story from his past. And then something happens and he wakes up. I think it was in pain or something. And I thought that was done well. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a good one. So I I think sometimes maybe just some of the choices of where to throw in some of these snippets. And I don't know if every snippet was needed, but they did all help move the story along and give you some more background into uh, Frank's... uh, well-being and and in his point of view kind of uh as an adult versus when he was a kid yeah what what happened in his childhood that had shaped his current life true all right mike so let's do this i'm going to consider this part of the story before i start asking about mcu literally the most important question on this podcast way more important than what ipa you're drinking again do you recommend people to sit down and waste an hour and 47 minutes of their life watching this film? Well, I, I don't mean to use the word waste, but use up an hour and 47 minutes of their life watching this film on Netflix. Absolutely, yes. Uh, I, I think I think the more people that see this, the, the better. I'm not sure exactly how the Netflix flix deals work with when a movie gets picked up like this. If they get paid per, per view or... If they got one lump sum or anything, uh, but if it's per view, I really would. I, I I'm gonna tell as many people as I can to watch this. This was pretty pretty good movie, and it's a it's a neat story. Well, I agree, Mike, and I have to announce uh, that I am biased just because I do know this story quite well. I don't know the before Michael came into the scene story well because uh, Frank kind of keeps that one close to his chest until he wrote his book and things like that but i've known how the the foundation or the organization say i almost spoiled it for you was founded so i know all that so i'm a bit biased it was also filmed in prescott which you know definitely is going to make me biased as heck i've been anticipating this film ever since i knew they were filming it in town i would just put in perspective i think i was still at the paper when they first started filming this wow and that was over three years ago I, I'm biased as hell, but I definitely think you need to watch this film. I am sad that I did not go and watch it in the theaters and support it, but I really wanted to wait until Mike and I could see it around the same time to talk about it. And so I'm sad I didn't see it in the theaters, but I'm also not so that you had the chance to experience it as well. Yeah, th- and this was a great movie, so you should definitely watch it uh, if you have some time. So speaking about life-changing experiences, Mike, how does Wishman relate 
to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, man. So I was getting really nervous on this one. I looked at quite a few of the the cast, and I couldn't find anything. But I kept scrolling down, and I found uh, Dale Dickey. Uh, She was in Iron Man 3. She played the character Miss Davis. And uh, she was Clover in this movie. So that was the the person that they... um, We kind of... The movie pretty much... Not quite opens, but is the first uh, scene where he, he's pulling over some people and then he kind of gets in a fight. Well, not the first scene. I think the second That's scene. That's his second pulling over. Yeah, yeah. Se- yeah, yeah, at night. The night pullover. Yeah, and I did recognize her. I didn't recognize that she was in Iron Man 3, though. But I did recognize her as a more bigger name uh, character actor. Like, there's a lot of people I recognize not necessarily by... Um, name, but by sight, where I'm like, oh yeah, that dude's from this, and that dude's from this, and oh hey, that's the guy from Breaking Bad. Oh my god, you know? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it 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 has a really good cast. It does. All right, Mike. Well, uh, I'll go ahead and do it since I know this next part of the structure. No, don't choke on your beer, Mike. Don't choke on your beer. I'm not choking on my beer. All right, you almost did from laughing. I saw it. Anyways, from here on out, we are going to spoil Wishman 100% as much as we want. So if you do not want it to be spoiled whatsoever, go ahead and click this guy off. Or if you already know the story like I do, and a lot of people, just keep listening. All right, man. Do you, do you want to spoil this one? or I want you to start I think he, because I, I know this story and you said you don't. And I am very disappointed in you, Michael. Okay, so being an Arizona native, jeez. Uh, you know, I did not know the uh, the Make a Wish Foundation origin, or and uh, th- thought it was a great way to learn about it. Um, I I feel bad. Uh, I I you know most of my life, or at least my younger years, I grew up in Arizona, and uh, I had no idea about any of this, uh, which I should have. So I don't know if that's education or. Uh, I don't know. I just didn't know. Well, it's also a difference. I don't know if you felt this when you were living in Flagstaff and going to NEU. There is a, I felt, I feel it hardcore, um, mostly because I've been here for so long in Prescott, but there is a huge difference between Northern Arizona and Southern Arizona. People up here talk to each other more. They're more friendly to each other, at least for the most part. And people, you know, tend to talk about stories and things like this all over the place. Southern Arizona, not so much. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I definitely fell in love with uh, Northern Arizona, like Flagstaff. I, I, you know, uh, (laughs) this is kind of terrible, but the part of the reason I moved to Flagstaff was to be as far away from my parents as possible. Which I still don't understand to this day because your mom and dad are freaking amazing. They are, man, but I, I wanted to, I don't know, I wanted to break free, man. Spread I, your I wings and fly. Yeah. Fly, I fly, fly. S- fly. For those fly. of you who don't have Skype and are not watching Mike, Mike is literally flapping his wings. It is amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then now I'm doing jazz hands. Jazz hands. It's all about um, the jazz hands. <laughs> uh, it, it, anyway... Yeah, so part of the reason I went up there, and then I thought it would be neat to be in like a mountain, because essentially Flagstaff is at 7,000 feet, and there's snow and different things. It's like a whole different climate. And what I got was so much better. It was It's such a great place. I, I really just love that place, and I would have stayed there, but there's no jobs. Like it's the, It's basically a college town, and there's a couple other things, and that's it. It pretty much is just not it's kind of like the the train passes through it's it's on the way um like it's a it's a it's a stopover for anyone on i40 there's it's not a lot of stuff there otherwise well i hate to say it but my experience of most of northerners on a not all is that exact same experience is that there are jobs here they're not the world's best jobs and they're it's very difficult to sustain yourself when everything in northern Arizona is more of a luxury community, 
because people move here that have already made a lot of money. People don't come here and make money. So it's it's a give and take, you know, it's the quality of life versus the cost and all that stuff. And I mean, especially Flagstaff. I mean, Flagstaff is even worse, you know, that's y- really, yeah. really yeah. expensive there. F- Flagstaff's the vacation homes and stuff were insane, but like, that's what it was. They were just vacation homes. So it's like, there's all these houses that no one lives in. And we have, crazy, we have a level of that. But not as much as flag we do. I mean, just in my neighborhood alone, I think I was pointing it out when you were here. I was like, oh, that one is empty. That one is empty. Just my drive home in my neighborhood, there's about seven. But that's not as bad as flag. Here, it's mostly people coming from other places that have already made their money that don't need it. And then the rest of us have just service jobs in one way, shape, or form. But we want to be here because we like the area or we whatever. We'll get back on the movie about (laughs) Northern Arizona. But you understand. You've You've understand so anyways i've known about this movie i don't know if i can call frank shankowitz a good friend i would consider him a friend i have met him many many times i have photographed him many many times at my current job literally his neighbor's house i went and photographed and sold it you know i know frank a little bit so i've known about this story i've not read his book he's going to shame me if he hears this but i've not read his book i need to pick it up i would like to read it but I've known about this story for a long time. And basically, this young boy, Michael, who did pass, as you saw in the film, helped save Frank. Like, Frank changed his life, and Michael changed Frank's life. And that's just incredible. Yeah, no. And it, you could kind of see... I mean, I, I got that from the movie, and it was a, it was very interesting. Because I, I felt like Frank... Uh, kind of had a gruff exterior, but it was through experience. He had been kicked on and and punched and just had a rough upbringing, so he had built this massive, you know, tough exterior. But he was actually a really caring person and stuff. And you know, this experience really helped him to refocus and and do something amazing i i you know i couldn't even imagine that a a uh highway patrol arizona highway patrol officer was like i'm gonna start a foundation you know that that was insane like that's awesome that's seriously where it came from too like that that is extremely true and i thought it was so fitting and just floored me i knew he was in it again when they were filming it but that they got robert pine from chips to be in this film i thought that was just amazing because seriously the kid loved chips that's that's true yeah and here he is in the film that inspired i mean think about it robert pine helped basically inspire the creation of the make-a-wish foundation through his television program yes everybody you know hollywood and all that elite and all that other bs but you never look at the other side of it of Hollywood and the stories and the things that inspire people to go out and do amazing things. Yeah. No, that, uh, that was neat. That was really neat. Um, so this movie, I really went watching this, Matt, just based on, you said, you know, this is a movie filmed in Prescott. It's on Netflix. We should watch it. Nothing really new came out. We, we apologize for the people that are expecting Jumanji this week. We screwed up. It's next week. We No, I <laughs> screwed up. I was looking at what's coming soon, and I swear I thought it was this week. Oh, well. But I, I also offered to go see Dark Waters. I'm kind of glad we didn't. I still think that's probably a really good movie. I've heard great, great, great things about it. But I think this is more important. Just purely, not even just purely based on us being a Prescott-centric podcast, but this is a great film that needs to be out there that people need to know about, that people need to watch, because it's incredible. It's fantastic. Again, I'm biased as hell, but I love it. Yeah, no, it it is is very good. I'd say the first two acts are are, are pretty good, but the third act is really good. Like, they, they nailed the end. I thought the end was really well done, how everything came together. It it really, it, it was great for me. I even enjoyed the, the kind of, like, a rookie uh, lawyer doing the yeah, interview yeah that was like, awesome it, 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 yeah i thought that was kind of a fun scene like that, that was fun nailed it because the whole time spoilers again the whole time you're thinking in the back of your head oh man this lady's trying to screw frank 
oh man, this dude is trying to screw Frank. Those cops went in there and they said, here, lie and do this and do that. And we're going to take this guy for everything. When in reality, they did, sure, they did wrong by getting drunk and driving drunk and fighting a cop, but they were not trying to swindle Frank at all. They clearly thought the other officer was the issue, but he just gave them the wrong name on purpose. Yeah. That was no. pretty pretty incredible that he that you know that story. Yeah, it was. So all right, Mike, again, I'm biased as hell. I don't even want to tell you how many reels I'm gonna give this. Cause uh I'm sure you already know, but you know what? Uh I don't care. I want to know how many reels you give it, Mike. How many? And if it's less than five out of five reels, I'm leaving the podcast forever. Oh man. Now I feel really guilty. No, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Four and a half reels. Uh, uh, I, I only knocked it a half a reel for just some of the story things. In the, it, it, dude, they were minor, but some of the flashback things, just just minor stuff. But I really loved it. I, four and a half reels for me. You know, that's strong. That's extremely strong. But, Mike, we need to cut this shit out because uh, it's starting again. This is now two weeks in a row of two four and a half reels. Or not four and a half reels. Same ratings for us. Because I definitely give it four and a half. Like I said earlier, couple things: the uh, repeated use of the same background. I caught that oh. pretty hard, but again, it's because I knew what it was. <laughs> you know, I saw it real easy <laughs> multiple times on the same pole as they passed a uh, pole over as they passed that Glassford Hill multiple times, and then the flashbacks. The flashbacks bothered me. Those two that I was talking about, how they were cut in and they don't really directly tell you it's a flashback, which stumps you a little bit. And then the the I don't even I don't even think I downgraded it for the kids acting, but that was another issue. But I mean shit, all that for half a reel, it's still it's an incredible film. It was shot well. Oh dude, speaking of that, I almost forgot. One of my favorite cinematography scenes in this movie is towards the beginning. When the two DPS officers are plotting and scheming, uh, the yeah. Tom Sizemore's character and the other guy, and they're in the hallway and they're back yeah, in the dark and rule of thirds and all that. I thought that was one of the most beautiful scenes of the entire movie. Cause I mean, it's telling you, you know, they're doing some shady shit with the backlit and all that stuff. I thought that was really well done. I really liked that shot. Yeah, that was, that, that was a, that was a good shot. That was a good scene. I, I, I like that scene. So anyways, all right, Mike. So, what are we doing next week? Well, I'm pretty sure we're doing Jumanji, man. We have to now. We've been telling people for two weeks. <laughs> we're still changing it now. We got to do Jumanji. <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I, I think, uh, I think Max is going to join me on it. I don't know exactly how well it's going to go, but we're, we're going to do it. Um, Special so, guest, maniacal yeah. Max, on the next podcast. Woo! That'll be fun. Yeah. You think she's gonna yell at me really bad, Mike? Um, uh, no, no. I mean, not at least on the pod. Oh, okay, good. I mean, because she does cuss me out every now and then on text messages, but that's different. You know, that's different. Yeah, actually, I'm joking. Joaquin, uh, Joaquin Maximus Filson Filson. No, no, Maximus Joaquin Morpheus. <laughs> yeah. No, um, Filson Filson, um. Uh, Vincent Vincent. Right, right. I think that's yeah, the that. whole thing. Yeah. Oh, you know, I probably still have the text message. I could pull it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's fine. All right. All right. Anyway. And then uh, 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 Holly, um, what was it? Oh, you remember the name of the uh, Joaquin Phoenix's character in uh, Gladiator? Oh, uh, De- De- Decimus? No. Decimus. No. It was some, uh, Damn it. Dude, I think it's Decimus. Uh, Mike, look it up because your keyboard doesn't make noise. I don't think it was Decimus. I think it's it's I think it's something with a C. Oh crap! I don't remember. Commodus. There you go. Commodus. There you go. All right. So Maximus and Commodus. Love it. Love it. All right. All right. So Mike, next week Jumanji. Week after that, what are we doing? Um. I think there's this movie that has some, uh, I don't know, some characters in the sci-fi thing. I, the Jedi. Like, I guess. Related I guess to it's kind of. I, I guess it's kind of a big deal. I don't know. Like, I, looking at your background, you might know something about it. Like, uh, 
is it is it Star the Wars of Star? Is, is this guy gonna be in it, Mike? Uh, the Wars of Star. I I believe. Let's see here. I believe Let, he I'll is. show you the name. Yes, 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 yes. Lando Calrissian. Yes, I believe he is. Um. Oh, here. This one's not from a movie though. This one is from uh, a TV show. Oh, oh, see, Matt. Can you see uh, that? Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, I haven't asked this you any of this at all, so I'm so just going to be in, blindsiding. No, 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 sh- I'm, sh- sh- we are now in the unstructured part where we can talk about whatever the hell we want according to Mike's structure. All right, Mike, go for yeah. it. Where are you going to ask me? Is it going to be good so or I'm is gonna it going to be blind, bad? I'm going to blindside you. Like the movie? Matt, uh, no. Nah, well, I mean, no, not like the movie. Okay. Matt, w- what do you think about us doing some kind of like – Nakatomi Tower like episode or something. Nakatomi Tower like, episode. Yeah, like like just just some like Die Hard episode, like some like holiday edition where we talk about Die Hard like every year. Oh, you just want to review Die Hard again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like you know what? Like, what if we- you know what? I'll do you one better. <laughs> I'll do you one better. All right, I'll do you one better. Let's do Die Hard two. We did Die Hard last year, Mike. All right, fine. All right, you just want to review know. Die Hard again? Screw it. We'll do Die Hard again for Christmas. You know what? Let's just make it a tradition. <laughs> that is the Real Film Nerds podcast traditional review. The week of Christmas, you're going to get Die Hard again, and it will not be the one from last year. It'll be a new one. And yeah, I gotta, we'll just keep reviewing yeah, it, dude. I gotta and, go and 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 I'll look up I'll my reels. Listen to the old one, and I'll make sure I talk about different stuff. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. (laughs) But yes, let's do it. Mike, let's do it. Every year, die hard. And this year, if you can figure it out, Maniacal Mags again. I want more mags. All right, if if we can figure it out. I want more mags. But Matt, also, speaking of of that episode thing, do you want to have a... Like a pre expectations viewing uh, or, or uh, talk uh, before we see the Star Wars. Well, do you want to do it that week or do you want to do it right now for the podcast? Oh, no. You know what? We would do it next week at the end of Jumanji after Jumanji. You want to do it at okay. the end of Jumanji? Okay. Because I don't yeah. really want to do like a completely separate podcast. I think talking, I think like adding it in, but we'll only do like, I don't know, we'll just make it like long. 15 minutes? Yeah, we'll do 15, 20 five, minutes. Is, um, yeah. Uh, Real Film Nerd super fan, Steve Stockmeyer, as Mike likes to call him, Stockmar. Oh, no, Stockmar, sorry. The hippie down in Phoenix, loves our podcast, knows that I'm a giant Star Wars nerd, loves to poke my buttons but he put a suggestion i think it was on my facebook page or was it real film nerds i don't remember it was one of them i don't he yeah, would love somewhere. to hear mike and i's thoughts opinions predictions on the new star wars film rise of skywalker before the film comes out much like what we've done in the past with sister podcasts mile high show and the blue milk podcast but they're both really busy and don't have time to do it. So Mike and I will just do it on our own. Let's do it, Mike. I say next week. Let's do it after Jumanji. Okay. Does that work? All right. So, uh, yeah, I'll and, uh, make sure I uh, have some good things to talk about. I, I'm not as up to to uh, date as you are on uh, the Wars of Star. But, you know, I have a few days. I have Disney+. Plus. We'll make it happen. Well, I just, I'm trying to stay away from everyone that's doing these predictions and uh, spoilers and, oh, look what fe- we found scoop kind of shit. I'm trying to stay away from that. I'm trying to only stick to the trailers. I have my own predictions. They're probably completely wrong, but we'll see. I'm not going to write anything down. I'm just going to go off to the top of my head, but we'll figure it out. I think it'll be fun. It'll be a cool discussion, especially if you like the wars. So let's uh, look forward to that for next week along with our review of jumanji if we haven't told you enough jumanji 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 as they said in the trailer who was it um the rock playing a caricature of danny devito jumanji yeah jumanji (laughs) 
All right, Mike, I think I'm done. I don't think I have anything else other than go watch Wishman. Tell your friends, make your family sit down and watch it with you. It is a great holiday film to watch with your family. All right, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening. Follow us on the socials, uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Real Film Nerds. All right. Thank you. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Matt Hinshaw from The Real Film Nerds podcast. Joining me in studio now on Magic 99.1. Happy Monday, Matt. Merry Monday. Merry Monday. I like like Merry Monday. That sounds better, right? (laughs) It does. It absolutely does. How are you? Good. How are you, Lisa? I'm good. I'm good. I'm excited to hear what you thought about Wish Man, the movie. Yeah, that's uh, two weeks in a row I've done Netflix, but I think this one makes a lot of sense because Wish Man was, I can confirm at least 90% of it was filmed here in Prescott. Right. It is based on a Prescott hero. Well, now he's a Prescott hero. He moved here. Yes. Many, 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 many years ago. Right. It's the story of Frank Schenkowitz, the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Okay. And this did come out a while ago. The reason why I want to talk about it, the reason why I watched it and I waited to watch it, it came out on Netflix last Tuesday. And oh, this good. is an incredible film, especially for the holidays. Extremely emotional. It stars uh, Andrew Steele and Kirby Bliss Blanton, Tom Sizemore, Danny Trejo. The cast is just spectacular. The story, I'm sure a lot of you know it, is incredible. This is a great film. I really loved it. Okay, I'm excited to hear that. I've not seen the film. I know a lot of people in our area have seen it because it was filmed here and a lot of people are in it. But um, So definitely check it out. It's on Netflix. Easy to find. Easy to find. It was a small opening when it opened. They did have have a premiere here at Yavapai College with Frank and the director and everyone came out. Uh, I didn't go. I should have gone, but I didn't. I was working. Things happen. <laughs> and I think it was only in the theaters here for a few weeks because it is a small independent film, which is tough to keep in movie theaters, even when it is filmed in your sure, town. Sure. So this is the perfect opportunity to go see it. I'm trying to tell everyone I know, go watch it. This is a great film. It's I don't want to say it's a lot of fun. It's very emotional. It's very poignant. It has lots of things to live by. I I highly recommend it. And you better give it five reels out of five. I'm close. Do I'm it. I'm real close. Okay, which it Real close. Uh, now, I was going to say, I've given five <laughs> reels before, just not on the radio. This will be my first time above four. Uh, it's four and a half because there's... Granted, it's because I know the area. There's yeah. a couple scenes where they're like on the highway and they drive past Glassford Hill like three times on the same car chase. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't okay. let that one slide. Okay. But that only dropped it a half a reel. Fair so enough. Definitely see it. It's an incredible film. All right. Check out Matt's podcast. It's the Real Film Nerds podcast. Thank you for being here this morning with me on Magic 99.1. Thanks again, Lisa. You're welcome. <laughs>